guys, what's up? It's I'm Stricken, your least favorite moderator from NicoClub.com. Today's video is going to be about how to rebuild your brake calipers, specifically Nissan Rogue brake calipers. The same will apply to Nissan Rogues, Altimas, Sentras, Maximas, G35s, and the non-sport G37 calipers, basically the, the single piston calipers. Uh, I ordered a centric rebuild kit that consists of a seal and a new boot. So we're going to tear down an old caliper that I have laying around and rebuild it. I'll show you guys some tips regarding cleaning it, what it should look like, and a couple tips on installing everything and putting it back together. So let's get on the workbench and see what we got. Now that we are on my workbench, we see here a used and badly worn rear caliper off a 2008 Nissan Rogue. See that boot? That boot's in pretty bad shape. So what we're going to do is we're going to tear this caliper down today, remove all the seals, the exterior boot and the interior uh, ring seal, clean everything up, and put it all back together with the kit that I ordered from eBay. Roughly about five bucks. This is all that it takes. It's a centric kit. These are pretty good quality. I can't imagine it being any worse than the OEM quality that gets about 30, 40, 50,000 miles and they get shot. So let's begin tearing it all down. So the first order of business is we want to make sure that this thing is not seized. So we're going to take our fingers or a caliper spreader tool and we're going to push the piston back in to make sure that it is not seized. If it's seized, we're pretty much done from here on end. But if it does in fact move back in, it is a actual serviceable, at least so far that we have know, serviceable caliper. Next order of business, we're going to figure out how to remove this outer boot and it has a ring inside that snaps into the caliper. Here I have a torn down caliper and if you can make out inside of here there's going to be a little ring groove and that is where the dust boot ring snaps in. So let's go ahead and try to poke that out. I'm not too worried about breaking this because it's already broken anyway. So if you do in fact tear the boot even more, who cares? Let's grab a good hold of it. And yank this out. Remember, it's not supposed to come out easily, so it might fight you a little bit. There we go. And as you can see, this is got this is really firm. It's that metal ring inside that holds it into place. You can probably make it out out of these holes. It's got a little snap ring inside. Then we have that out. We can begin to force our piston out. Like I said, if it's not seized, it should come out by hand. Or you could put some air pressure inside. If you're lucky like myself, where the um, the banjo bolt hole is directly behind the piston. You can take something soft like plastic, like a pen tip, and just gently push it out. Don't scar the back of the piston. So the next order of business is we want to inspect the inside. of the cylinder. We want to check everything out, make sure there's no rust or massive pitting inside, which ours looks good. We also want to take a look at our piston, wipe it down from all the brake fluid, and inspect the surface area for any pitting or rust, which ours looks really good. We just have some very, very minimal wear, which is completely normal. Check the back of it, looks pretty good. And the surface area, I'm not too concerned about because we'll clean that up later. This is the surface area that actually touches the brake cal or the brake pad, so it's okay if it's a little bit pitted up. This area, we want to make sure it's clean inside of here because that's where the dust boot is going to sit. So go ahead now and take the time to really clean this up with a gentle brass brush, gently cleaning up the the area 
You can use a scotch pad gently. Do not use any kind of steel wool as it could take off the surface area. Um, you want to use only softer metals than what you're working with. So you definitely want to use something like brass. You can clean up in there. It's not a big deal. That area doesn't get any use of any form. And wipe down this area. And we'll be right back for the removal of that seal inside. Now that we went ahead and cleaned everything up, scrubbed it down, you can see it's an alright job. I don't really care because this is, like I said, the surface area that touches the brake pad anyway. It's exposed to the elements. You'll never get it perfectly clean like the rest of the body. This side is hidden inside of the cylinder anyway. The most important thing is that we get this area here clean because that's where the dust boot will lock into. And all of this area is pit free, rust free. It's not gouged up anywhere. Nice and clean. So the next order of business is we're going to remove the inside seal. It is that black ring inside of there. You're going to need some little uh, tongs like that, I guess, that I'm holding. Grab it without scratching or marring the inside surface area. Take it and yank it out. We're also going to go ahead and clean the channel that it sits in with some uh, brake cleaner. So before we start, we're going to gather up a few tools. We're going to need some brake fluid to lube everything up before we begin to shove everything back together. A caliper spreader tool, maybe, to help push the piston back in nice and evenly. And obviously the, the rebuild kit. So we're going to start off by lubing our new ring seal. We're going to pour some brake fluid into the cap. Dip our finger in it and spread this around. This way, nothing's going in dry. Everything's going in already pre-moistened and ready to go. So we're going to lubricate it, make sure there's no dry spots anywhere on it. And put that back into our cylinder. Once you ensured that nothing is bound up anywhere, drop a little bit of more oil on it. Because you probably wiped some off. Work it around, get the whole cylinder inside but definitely get that seal. Could also work a little bit in here just so it's easier to slide in. And just make sure there's no contaminants anywhere inside. If there is, you really should remove everything and clean it back out. Next we're going to remove our dust seal and just take a look at how it functions. Let's take a look at which way's in, which way's out. And if you remember, those little notches were the inside of it. So it would sit basically like that stretched out. And when you compress it back in, it's supposed to go in nice and flush, evenly all the way around. So what we're going to want to do is lubricate the piston itself all over so it goes in nice and easier what you want to do is set that down you want to put this already onto the piston Dress that piston up and compress it, the boot, spin it around so you know it's on evenly. Remember, these are brand new parts. Everything's going to be stiff 
and it's going to be watertight, which is what we want. You can then take your piston and evenly, don't go in cockeyed, because then you're going to bind up that seal inside, evenly begin to push it back in. And this is often the hardest part of the job because that seal is just does not want to give way. This is where we're going to use our caliper tool. This tool makes the job a lot easier. We're going to position it in all the way and begin to install the piston back in. I think I just felt it go in through the seal finally. Now once you begin to force it back down most of the way, you're going to notice the boot is going to want to begin to seat already. So just push that piston in until you feel that you have enough spacing for the boot to seat down. Remove your tool and begin to pop in. You're going to feel it pop, the actual boot. You don't want to use tools for this unless you have like a cell phone uh, screen remover tools like plastic ones that are not going to poke through this because if you tear this boot you pretty much just negated everything you did once you have ensured that the seal is in fact in the dust boot go ahead and inspect it make sure it looks like that even all the way around If you'd like to check the functionality of your rebuilt caliper to make sure your work is fine, push the piston back out with, like I said earlier, either some compressed air or a tool to push the piston back out. And you'll see that it comes out nice and perfectly flush. Everything's even on all sides. And you can push your piston back in. And you'll see that it is, in fact, even everywhere. And nothing's bulging out. Nothing's... Uh, pushing out anywhere. So there you go folks, that's how you rebuild a piston or a, a caliper, I'm sorry. Link in the chain, but
keep it dust together, always staying unchanged. Don't blame anybody for the world of the game. That I'm like, we feel stuck, and it's like we're in the rain. As it never stops pouring down. Dropping on our faces like the tears on a clown. Everybody wishing that they lived on the ground. Praying that the lost will be found. Just another link in the chain. Keep it dust together, always staying unchanged. Don't blame anybody for the world of the game. That I'm like, we feel stuck, and it's like we're in the rain. And it never stops pouring down. Dropping on our faces like the tears on a clown. Everybody wishing that they lived on the ground. Praying that the lost will be found. But everybody feels trapped on the wrong for themselves. They've got an act, it's a fact, and they can't be ignored. But if God exists, it's clear he got bored. We keep on going to war, but what for? No one seems to remember the cause. We keep on getting left. So there you have it, folks. That is how you rebuild Nissan calipers, or pretty much any. A uh, single piston caliper, it's that easy, it's that cheap, five bucks per caliper, generally, uh, for a rebuild kit on eBay. And guys, don't forget to visit nicoclub.com for all of your Nissan specific and Infinity specific jobs. Um, we got great forums on there, we got a really knowledgeable staff. Uh, the guy that runs it, he's awesome, he knows almost everything you could think of about Nissan, he hangs out with all the Nissan corporate folks. Um, head over to NicoClub.com. If you got a rogue, visit the rogue forums. I'm Mom Stricken on there. I'll answer some of your questions. We got a bunch of cool guys on there. Rogue One, uh, following front, a bunch of great guys on there. Uh, like I said, this also fits Sentra, uh, Altima, Maxima, G35, G37, non S type, non Brembo calipers. It's literally that easy. Thanks guys for watching. It's I'm Stricken, and I'm out. Thank <laughs> you.